sum up he sent over here. Let me make sure it lines up on the stream here. Because <coughs> it was a little too big last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I'm eating my chicken noodles. Mm hmm. See? Too big. And that's why we test these things, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So, the creator of the deck is Quasi Quafta. You've probably seen him in the uh, in the chat before. He sent me a, like, a bunch of deck lists. This is the one that I thought was the most interesting looking. Uh, and he sends over this sum up of it. The deck originally started as an experiment to see if you could build a mono red stack stack using primarily enchantments. The answer was ultimately yes. This deck used to have roughly 25 enchantments and maybe 18 to 19 creatures. Damn. But that would probably lose because there are very few blockers and you would become a big target once Descent into Avernus gets 6 counters and hits everyone for 12. Yeah, fair enough. <coughs> Wild card, by the way. <laughs> Descent to Avernus is nutty. Uh, the goal of this deck is to punish people for trying to play the game by laying down as many punishers and automatic burn pieces as I can as quickly as possible. This involves using the Heb's combat damage trigger to chuck garbage into the graveyard, draw new punishment, and ramp enough to play them. Punishers are cards like Cemetery Gatekeeper and Spell Shock, which deal damage to opponents for taking game actions, and automatic burn pieces are cards like Glibbering, or Gibbering Fiend and Quakebringer, which deal damage to opponents for simply playing the same pod as me. These are supplemented by a variety of damage adders and doublers, Mechanized Warfare, Soul Theme, etc. Pieces meant to help Neheb get through nasty boards, and pieces meant to deter people from stacking me or for smacking me back. Another fun note is often it can win. Is often wait what does he say? Another fun note is that often if I can't win, I'll do what I can to draw the game. Repercussion plus blasphemous act is my favorite combo ever. I'll have to see what that is when we look at the deck here. Uh, but that sounds really cool. I actually that sounds exactly like my Zancha deck. Yeah, this is the exact same strategy my Zancha deck has. Is just punishing people for taking game actions. So I'm gonna probably find a bunch of cards in here I need. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the deck. So we got Neheb. You already read what he does. Uh, or she, whatever Neheb is. But super fucking good card. <laughs> uh, get some belches in the chat there. You can discard all your garbage and then get a bunch of red mana. And then you just use all that red mana to do a bunch of punishers. So that seems pretty good. Uh, so we've got artifacts here. Again, we skip over the... Wait, barbed wire was one of the... Oh, okay, I thought that was a uh, Brother's War card. I was like, wait a second. Uh, we skip over the removal, mana ramp, card draw, board wipes, all that stuff, just because every deck pretty much has those. Uh, so Arcane Signet is a good mana ramp. Uh, barbed Wire is three colorless for an artifact. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Barbed Wire deals one damage to that player. Pay two, prevent the next one damage that would be that would be dealt by Barbed Wire this turn. That's cool. So it does one damage to everybody on their upkeep, but you're able to prevent your damage if you pay two. It's pretty cool. Uh, Cattle Chops is great. I love this card. Three colorless for an artifact. Whenever a creature attacks, Cattle Chops deals one damage to it. It just shuts off one ones from attacking you. Or attacking, period, I guess. Uh, Cliffhaven's Kite Sail, just to get in a head through, I'm guessing. Um, super cheap way to give a creature flying, so sure. I, I get it. Mana Ramp. Mana Ramp. Mana Ramp. Card Draw. Uh, Lightning Greaves, classic, but giving the Heb Haste is actually especially good, because if you can smack the turn she comes out, you pretty much replace her. Uh, Mask of Memory, two colorless for an equipment that equips for one. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw two cards, then discard a card. Yeah, it's kind of fitting the theme of Neheb, just trying to like dig for more punishing pieces. Uh, Mindstone, Planner, Atlas. This one's interesting. I've seen this one around. I'm not quite sure what it does. Two colorless for an artifact. Planner Atlas enters the battlefield tapped. When Planner Atlas enters the battlefield, you look at the top four cards of your library. If you do, reveal up to one land card from among them and put it in... Oh, wait. Put it on the top of your library and the rest on the bottom in any order. That's kind of cool. And then it taps for a colorless. So it's a two mana ro two mana, uh, mana rock, but it also like fixes your next draw to be a land. I actually like that. Uh, this is cool. This is like the keep the two lander card. Like if you have two lands in your hand and then a planner atlas, you're like, cool. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm going to get my third land. Uh, I really like that card. Soul Ring's good. Thought Vessel's good. Uh, Whisper Silk seems great in here. No one can target Neheb. Neheb always gets through. That's very good. Uh, battles. Let's see what battles you're working with here. 
Uh, invasion from, for Karsis is 2 and 2 red, and it has 4 health, and it's a battle. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, I'm tilting my head because it won't flip it on the website. When it enters the battlefield, it deals 3 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. It's not bad. And then when you flip it, uh, it turns into a refraction elemental, which is a 4-4 four, four with ward that makes you pay 2 life. That's, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, if anybody targets it, you do the ping thing. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, refraction elemental deals 2 damage to each opponent. Boom. That's going in my Xantia deck. I'm going to find a ton of stuff in this deck for that deck. And hopefully vice versa. Uh, invasion of Ragatha. Uh, another battle. Two and a red for a five uh, health. Is that what you call it on battle? Or whatever. Defense counters. Uh, when it comes into play, it deals four damage to another target battle or opponent. And then one damage to a creature. You run this one, right? Um, no, I run the discard one. The discard one. This one's very good too. It shoots another battle for four. That seems great. Uh, and then it turns into a Disciples of the Inferno, which is a 4-4 with prowess. If a non-creature source you control would deal camp damage to a creature, battle, or opponent, it deals that much plus two. Those are both going to go into my deck. I'm pretty sure I probably have one of those apiece. That's not common. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, those are both sick. Love that. Uh, Angras Marauders, five and two red for a four or for a five, uh, four four. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or a player, it deals double that much damage to that permanent or player instead. <clears throat> sure, that makes sense. The only reason I don't run these in Xantia and like they're still really good because I still run all these other cards that deal damage, but Xantia herself will go underneath someone else's control, so she won't get her damage doubled. And just something about that little like kink in the gameplay makes me not run them in my Xantia deck. And here they're f fucking great, but Xantia, uh, eh, I'm just not the biggest fan. Seven bucks for Braylon Sky Shark. I had no idea she was seven bucks. Uh, three and a red for a three three partner. Uh, doesn't really matter. When you discard a card, put a one one counter on her, and she deals one damage to each opponent. In this deck, you're going to be dumping all your bad cards out of your hand with Neheb. Braylon's going to be shooting people for a shit ton. That's literally the bread and gravy that you want for this deck. And then you can play one uh, red to give it trample until end of turn. Which I guess is relevant because when you're discarding all those cards, she's going to be getting huge. So Braylon is 100% a way to win a game in this deck. I'm guessing you've won a lot of games with Braylon. Uh, Brash Taunter. Four and red. I don't remember this thing costing five. For a 1-1 indestructible, when Brash Taunter is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. That's sick. Two and a red to tap it. Brash Taunter fights another target creature. Ooh, I really like that. You just have it fight something huge and then pings everybody or ping someone for a lot. Or you can like you're in mono red, so you run Blasphemous Act. So you can just have this thing take 13 damage and then poof, deal 13 damage to an opponent. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you have stuffy dolls? That's a really good ask. Is your mic on? Yep. Hell yeah, dude. Cool. Uh, yeah, do you have stuffy dolls? <laughs> Answer the guy's question. Uh, yeah, stuffy doll seems great in here, too. If you're going for that, like, because just for the exact same reason, Brash Taunter's good. Uh, Cemetery Gatekeeper, one and a red for a 2-1 first strike. When Cemetery Gatekeeper enters the battlefield, exile a card from a graveyard. Whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, Cemetery Gatekeeper deals two damage to that player. I love Cemetery Gatekeeper. This is one of the ones I still need to pick up for Xantia. Uh, Chander's Incinerator's great. Five and a red for a 6-6. Six, six. This spell costs X less to play, where X is the total amount of non-creature damage that you have dealt to your opponents this turn. That's really good. Uh, and then whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, Chander's Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. <laughs> That's very good. You'll just be killing creatures with all the pinging you got going on in this deck. Um, there's a lot of creatures with that effect. Oh, 100% Stuffy Doll. There's one a creepy doll. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I feel like there's like Nin the pain artist, but she's like blue green or blue red. Flame blade angel. Four and two red for a four four flying. When a source an opponent controls deals damage to you or a permanent you control, you may have flame blade angel deal one damage to that source's controller. Ooh. That counts as each creature, right? Yeah, each creature is a source of damage. It's pretty good. I like that. Uh, okay, so this is Gibbering Fiend that he was talking about. One and a red for a 2-1. When Gibbering Fiend enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each opponent. Delirium, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if there are four or more card types among cards in that player's graveyard, Gibbering Fiend does one damage to that player. Oh, that's cool. Comes in and pings everybody for one, and then once you hit Delirium, it just pings everybody consistently. 
That is cool. Uh, Glinthorn Buccaneer is another one that I, I have on the list to pick up. One and two red for a two four haste. Whenever you discard a card, Glinthorn Buccaneer deals one damage to each opponent. Pay one and a red, discard a card, draw a card, activate this ability only if Glinthorn Buccaneer is attacking. Uh, yeah, really good. It doesn't say once a turn though. So you can just play it, swing, and then dump all your mana into doing that ability. It's really good. Harsh Mentor, again, another one that's on the list. One and a red for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land on the battlefield, if it isn't a mana ability, Harsh Mentor deals two damage to that player. Great card. That's going to do some, some heavy damage. I was going to ask if you ran Emulation Shaman, but there it is. Uh, one and a red for a 1-3. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land that isn't a mana ability, Immolation Shaman deals one damage to that player. Pay three and two red for it to get plus three, plus three, and menace until end of turn. Which is random as shit, but good. <laughs> I'll take a four, six with menace, but like, it's kind of random that it has that ability. The pinging is already pretty decent. Uh, so mana ramp with Iron Mirror. Kazool is great. Three and two red for a 5-4. Whenever a creature an opponent controls... Attacks, if you're the defending player, create a 3-3 three, three red ogre creature token unless that player pays 3. So, these are like my favorite types of cards. And they always get hate. They always get like a response of like, I don't like these types of cards because then the opponent just doesn't swing at you and you don't get the value from the card. And I'm like, you just like said the value right there in that sentence. Like, I'm like, like they didn't swing at me. You know what I mean? Like, the incentive of me getting a 3-3 is just that. It's, like, incentive for me, and it's also incentive for people not to swing, which is a benefit. If someone's not swinging at me and I don't get a 3-3, I'm not like, Shit, Kazool did nothing! Like, I'm like, that guy didn't swing at me. That's exactly what I wanted to be doing. Uh, Life of the Party is 3 and a red for a 0-1. First Strike Trample Haste. Whenever Life of the Party attacks, it gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. When Life of the Party enters the battlefield, if it's not a token, each opponent creates a token that's a copy of it. The tokens are goaded for the rest of the game. I like him. <laughs> everybody just gets a big trample first strike haste beater that just swings at each other, but you, everybody but you. Life of the Party's sick. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, Magus of the Wheel, yeah, wheel effects seem pretty good in here too. Two and a red for a 3-3, three, three, pay one and a red, tap it, sack it. Uh, each player discards their hand and then draws seven. It's pretty decent. Platinum Angel, that's a funny one. Um, what are we running? Neheb? I guess you could rush out a Platinum Angel, why not? Seven colorless for a 4-4 four, four flying, you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. This seems just like a funny card for like the play group, I'm guessing. Where it's just like you play Platinum Angel and it's like fuck. Uh, but in the deck, that's pretty much that's the only card so far where I'm like, eh, I don't know if that really fits in the deck. But Platinum Angel, Platinum Angel, be Platinum Angelin. So you can't really doubt it. Quick Bringer, I don't know what this does. Three and two red for a five four. Your opponents can't gain life. Love it. At the beginning of your upkeep, Quick Bringer deals two damage to each opponent. This ability triggers only if Quick Bringer is on the battlefield or if Quick Bringer is in your graveyard and you control a giant. And then you can foretell it for two and two red. We probably don't control a giant, but our player, our opponent's not being able to gain, and then just him doing two on our upkeep is actually pretty solid. I need to pick one of those up too. Rampaging Ferocidon. This is a $9 card. Two and a red for a 3-3 Menace. Players can't gain life. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to that creature's controller. Oh, so it's like the reverse. Wow, Riddy, Riddy Ro Roastmaster is great. That common, it, like other cards, make me realize how good that card is. You need a witty roast master in here as well. That seems really good. Uh, Sin Prodder, two and a red for a two-three menace or a three-two menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. Any opponent may have you put that card into your graveyard. If that player does, Sin Prodder deals damage to that player equal to the card's converted mana cost. Otherwise, put it into your hand. That seems great. We just get to draw all of our gas, and if we don't, our gas is just pinging stuff, which is what we want it to be doing anyway. Uh, Sulfim Mayhem of Dominus. Two and two red for a 5-4. If a sorcery you control would deal combat or non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals double that damage instead. Pay one and two hybrid for Exion. Discard two cards. Put an indestructible counter on Sulfim. His is one of the easier ones. Just discarding two cards. That's pretty saucy. Dude, the the Drivnod one, you have to get rid of three creatures. The the green one, you have to sack two creatures. Oh my god. Uh, Tectonic Giant, two and two red for a three four. Whenever Tectonic Giant attacks, 
or becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls. Choose one. Tectonic Giant deals eh, three damage to each opponent. Exile the top two cards of your opponent's or of your library. Choose one of them until end of turn. You may play that card. Uh, Tectonic Giant, I feel like looks cool in a vacuum, but I don't think is that great. Cause he's a four for a three four. He has like no like keywords or anything. He's just a vanilla four for a three four. And the only thing that makes his ability trigger is being targeted by something an opponent controls, which is just gonna be removal. So you get like one use out of this thing. So it's four mana for a three four that does three damage when it dies, essentially. Which I don't think is great. I think there's probably better ones. Uh, Torbrand Thane of Red Fell. One and three red for a two four. If a red source you would you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent you could an opponent controls it deals that much damage plus two thorbrand's great he came out in that uh, mono red precon and he like dropped significantly which i think's great because he's a really cool card um wildfire devils i've never seen this card three and a red for a four two let me make sure i got my mic up here when wildfire devils enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your end step choose a player at random that player exiles an instant or sorcery card from their graveyard copy that card you may play it without paying its mana cost that seems good you just get to do that on your upkeep oh oh when he attacks too you're right that is pretty good that's why i keep you around big dog you always catch the shit like that uh, and you also have the win cons, apparently. <laughs> I was rewatching that win con video, and I was like, half these suggestions are from him. Because you're like, this one, that one, boom, this one. And I was like, these are all good. I gotta put these all on there. Uh, Wildfire Devil seems great. Each upkeep, you just get to rip something out. It's at random, but, like, that's almost, like, cooler. <laughs> like, just kind of lottery every turn. Uh, Zozu, of course, one and two red for a two-two. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, Zozu deals two damage to that land's controller. That's a good one. Ooh, he 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 uh he chipped it down to only 17 enchantments now. He's roughing it. Uh, Aether Flash, two and two red for an enchantment. This thing keeps rubbing against my chest. It's rubbing me the wrong way. Uh, two and two red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature comes into play, it deals two damage. Or Aether Flash deals two damage to it. That's kind of cool. No token making. No two twos. No one ones. I like it. Uh, Ancient Runes. I was just looking at this one the other day to put it in Xantia. Two and a red for an enchantment. During each player's upkeep, Ancient Runes deals one damage to that player for each artifact he or she controls. Super good. Like with the treasure shit that's happening, it's like you're going to have to use those treasures or you're going to take a ton of damage. Uh, Cave Sense. One and a red for an enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus one plus one and has mountain walk. Hmm. Sure. Maybe I'll come across something that makes more sense later with the mountain walk thing. Circle of Flame. One in a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature without flying attacks you or a planeswalker you control, Circle of Flame deals one damage to that creature. Love it. I love all the hate towards tokens. It's like no one ones are swinging at me ever. I will say this is pretty refreshing to see a Neheb deck without aggravated assault. Don't speak too soon. Oh, wait, no, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. We've officially made it past Aggravated Assault territory. We're in the clear. Attack with Neheb and basically get infinite combats. <laughs> yeah, that's that's super fun. Speaking... It really does. Another great shout-out. Key to the City sounds great in there. Uh, Descent into Avernus is nutty. I just found out about this card the other day. Two and a red for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Put two descent counters on descent into Avernus. Then each player creates X treasure tokens and descent into Avernus deals X damage to each player where X is the number of descent counters on descent into Avernus. Jesus. <laughs> two, four, six, eight, ten. Just that escalates the game so fast. Great card in here too. It's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, Dictate of the Twin Gods. I haven't seen this in forever. 3 and 2 red for a flash enchantment. If a source you control would deal combat damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to a permanent or player instead. Oh, if a source would deal. So that's for everybody. I never realized Dictator of the Swing Gods was everybody. We're definitely going to get more value out of that, though. Uh, Furnace of Wrath. 1 and 3 red for an enchantment. If a source would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals double that damage instead. Again. 
Kind of the same thing as Dictate, except Dictate's one more and it has Flash and it's a little bit easier to cast. But Dictate's $2 and Furnace is 8 so that's interesting. Uh, mana Barbs, awesome. Uh, 3 and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, Mana Barbs deals 1 damage to that player. I think everyone's going to be tapping mana. That's a definite damage dealer in a game, for sure. Uh, Mechanized Warfare is a new one out of, I think, Phyrexia? No, Brothers War. 1 and 2 red for an enchantment. If a red or artifact source you control, that's going to be all of them, would deal damage to an opponent or permanent, it deals that much plus 1 instead. Mechanized Warfare is awesome. It's a fun card. Mudslide. <laughs> I just showed you this card. That's, that's hilarious. Uh, two and a red for an enchantment. Creatures without flying do not untap during their controller's untap phase. At the end of his or her upkeep, each player may pay an additional two per creature they would like to untap. Sick. My recommendations for the deck would be Conspiracy Theorist. Oh, Conspiracy Theorist seems great. Oh, Surly Pagasaur for sure. 100% that he's doing here. Uh, and the Cycling Lands. Oh, yeah. 100%. Cycling land, Surly Badgesaur, all that stuff. Giving the Heb Death Touch makes it almost guaranteed. He basically gets in for damage. Assign one damage to the blocker. Since he has Trample, Trample the rest. Oh. Yeah, Basilisk Collar would be good then. Me either. Me, me either. Plus, the Life Link is nice for cards that also affect you, like Barbed Wire, for instance. 100%. Yep, my Rex would... Oh, yeah. I, I, I Sneaky Include would be Basilisk Collar. Yep, 100%. That's fire. Good recommendations, my guy. Uh, both of you are fucking popping off with them, dude. That's why you need some people around you. I'm just a talking box, baby. <laughs> Pyrostatic Pillar. I've never seen this either. One in a red for an enchantment. Whenever a player plays a spell with converted mana cost three or less, it deals two damage to that player. Is this a CEDH card? That shuts off, like, everything. Yeah, like most of CEDH, CEDH is just going to be like little stuff like that trying to pop off that seems pretty good if you're in like a deck like this in cdh that seems great so especially in normal magic that seems very good uh repercussion oh this is the, is this the one he brought up in his thing repercussion plus blasphemous act yep okay so repercussion one and two red for an enchantment whenever a creature is dealt damage repercussion deals that much damage to that creature's controller oh yeah let me just win the game <laughs> real quick <laughs> <laughs> Big Dog goes, I love this. And then he goes, Endo, it's not a CEDH card. <laughs> true. He says, because your spells are also that CMC. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Repercussions is fucking fantastic. I love Roiling Vortex. It's just a cool looking card. Like, I love the art. I love what it does. It's just like, I like cards that do like 17 small things instead of like one big thing they're like my favorite cards and this is like the definition of that uh one in a red for an enchantment at the beginning of each player's upkeep rolling vortex roiling vortex deals one damage to them whenever a player cast a spell if no mana was cast to, uh, spent to cast that spell roiling vortex deals five damage to that player pay one red your opponents can't gain life this turn uh yeah roiling vortex is great preventing your opponents from gaining life is surprisingly relevant like, cause there's just like, we found out playing against like Deegan the other day. It's like, you'll just randomly be like at like 90 life. Like sometimes like decks will just fire off in a way where like the piece that's normally like blank to win the game is like replaced with like a life link piece or like a life gain piece. And then it's just like, oh, I'm at 80 life, I guess. Instead of doing the win game thing, I gained life this game. Uh, so stuff like that's surprisingly relevant. Smoke is super cool. I love this fucking card. 1 and 2 red for an enchantment. Players cannot untap more than one creature during their untap phase. We don't really care. We don't want to be swung at very much. We're not swinging too much. The only thing we're going to be swinging with is our Neheb. So, perfect. Uh, spell Shock. 2 and a red for an enchantment. Whenever any player successfully casts a spell, Spell Shock deals 2 damage to him or her. I don't know how I didn't hear about Spell Shock when I was looking for stuff for Xantia. That's very, very good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, Sulfuric Vortex, 1 and 2 red for an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Sulfuric Vortex deals 2 damage to that player. If a player would gain life, that player gains no life instead. I love Sulfuric Vortex. That's another one that's in mine. 
What, this one? No. Uh, volcanic strength. I, which one are you thinking of though? Because I do know which one you're. I, I know like the wording of the card you're thinking, but I can't think of what card it is. We have to dump your. Oh, no, I, I'm thinking Sire of Insanity, where everybody has to dump their hand. <laughs> I have it in my binder. Ridiculous card. Uh, volcanic strength. One in a red for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two plus two and has mountain walk. So. The mountain walk stuff's the only thing that's kind of confusing me because I've seen two cards so far that are based around like giving stuff mountain walk, and you you're not running like uh, like blood moon or anything like that. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm missing something. Lightning bolt for sure. I just like lightning bolt. Uh, to bolt trickery, counter spell, a good one, and then you can of course use it on yourself to try to hit something. Uh, wild magic surge. Oh yeah, we just I just saw this one the other day. Two red for an instant. Destroy target permanent and opponent controls. Its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a permanent that shares a card type with that permanent, and they put it into play, and then they put the rest at the bottom of their library. Uh, that's that's fine. It's just like a, uh, it's not just like a chaos warp. This one guarantees them a hit. But let's be honest. If you're removing something, like you're probably more worried about the thing you remove than most of what they can hit. Uh, we've got 20 or 35 lands. Let's see if we've got any that are uh, specifically need to be brought up in this deck uh rogue's passage is fantastic in here four tap it target creature can't be blocked this turn it's very good <laughs> big dog goes oh my god i just realized this is the other naheb <laughs> uh, dude i kind of did the same thing though when i looked up naheb their art is like eerily similar like she's just like shifted the other way so, like, finding the actual artwork to put as the banner for this video was, like, a bitch and a half. Or a bitch and a half, not a half. Uh, Crazy Crafter, what's up, my guy? We looking at your deck. Uh, which is really fucking cool, by the way. Uh, do you want to explain the mountain walk stuff? Because I'm a little confused by the mountain walk stuff, and maybe, maybe a little deck creator himself will explain it. Uh, Rogue's Passage is a great land in here, by the way. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's a very good point. Urza's is mine, Urza's is power plant, Urza's tower, for sure. Word of ambition would be really good in there. The red one. Oh my. Hundred percent. Yeah, court of ambition would be great. Super good one in here. Blasphemous act. Uh, change of fortune. Another wheel. Mizium Mortars. I haven't seen this in forever. One in a red for a sorcery. Mizium Mortars deals four damage to target creature, and you can overload it for three and three red. So that's actually pretty good. <coughs> he says, uh, help to get the combat damage in if they're running red. I also used to run Blood Mood in here. Okay. I was going to say, that's the specific card I brought up too. Was uh, Blood Moon. And there's a couple... If I'm not mistaken, the, the, do you remember the old... The old blue cards that were like one in a blue or like one in two blue and you could enchant a land and it turned them into an island. Mm -hmm. Isn't there ones like that for mountains? Like spreading seas. Yeah, spreading seas. Isn't there like a spreading seas for mountains? Mm -hmm. I swear there's a spreading seas for mountains. Let me look it up really quick. Enchant Mountain, that's not what we want. Target Mountain becomes this. No, whenever land enters, untap Target Mountain. Nope, nothing that turns stuff into mountains. Unfortunately. Containment Construct might be useful. Okay, yeah, let me, let's me let look at the maybe board really quick, and then th this is a good time to move into like some cards you could add into here. Uh, Aether Sting is three and a red for an enchantment. Whenever one of your opponents plays a creature spell, Aether Sting deals one damage to that player. I think Aether Sting's great. That seems fine in here. Uh, battle Strain. One in a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature blocks, Battle Strain deals one damage to that creature's controller. Battle Strain seems kind of cool, too. Honestly. Uh, Blood Mist. This is one that I've considered, but then I was like, meh. One in a red for an enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature gains double strike. There's not enough creature stuff going on, so I, I went through that exact same thing. 
Uh, Chandra's Pyreling, again, the creatures that give themselves like plus one, plus zero, or plus three, plus zero, whenever anything takes damage, they're like, eh, we're not really trying to do the combat thing. Citadel of Pain was another one that I was going to put in mine. Uh, Fortune Thief, four and a red for a zero one damage that would reduce your life to less than one reduces it to one instead. Eh. It's got morph so you can like surprise win a game with that, but it's kind of the same thing with Platinum Angel where I'm like, it's like a win more card. Like if you're already like ahead enough that you're just dropping Platinum Angel for like the meme of it, then it doesn't really matter. And if you're behind enough that like you think like a Platinum Angel is going to like save a game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it is just because someone might be able just to blow it up. Uh, Furnace Punisher. Two and a red for a 3-3 Menace. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Furnish Punisher deals two damage to that player unless they control two or more basic lands. Oh, yeah, I saw that guy. It's way too hard to turn on. Ride of the Raging Storm. Sick, though. Three and two red for an enchantment. Creatures named Lightning Rager can't attack you or a Planeswalker. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player creates a 5-1 red elemental creature token with haste and trample that they have to sack at the end of turn named Lightning Rager. That's a cool card. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of with you on not putting it in here, but it's cool. Uh, Sun Crowned Hunters. Six for a 5-4 that deals three damage whenever it's dealt damage. Yeah, it's too slow. Uh, Tarolf, I, I actually definitely think has room in here for sure. 2 and 2 red for a 5-4 trample. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, Tarolf deals the excess damage to the opponent. Uh, which I think definitely has space in here. One, it can kill somebody with Blasphemous Act, which is there's already another card in here that does that, so having like two ways to do that seems great. Um, but then you have a lot of ways of like pinging creatures for two in here. There's a lot of cards that are like, if this happens, ping a creature for two. If this happens, ping a creature for two. And if you're pinging one ones, like if you're pinging tokens, you can do the access one damage with Taroff to the opponent, which is like no scraps left on the plate type shit, which is cool. Uh, Trailblazer's Boots. Two uh, for an artifact equipment for that equips for two. Equip creature as non-basic land walk. Uh, I think Trailblazer's Boots is way better than Volcanic Strength. The thing that gives it mountain walk. Because every single deck's going to have a non-basic land. And then it's just two mana to equip onto your Teneb every or onto your Neheb every time, and it's just pretty much unblockable for two mana. So I think definitely there's a switch right there for Trailblazer's boots. Uh, Wildfire Elemental is the same thing as the other one. It gets plus one plus zero whenever anything's dealt damage, which is cool if your whole deck's trying to do that. But like four or five creatures doing that, um, I'm not sure. So I'm with you on the maybe board. All those are kind of some of them are very close to getting in. Like Aether Sting and Battle Strain are like very close for me. I had Tarolf in here for a while, but there wasn't much interaction with other creatures at the time. He might have to come in now, though. I think Mountain Walk is funnier. <laughs> the, the, you're 100% right, it's funnier. <laughs> and that is a very valid reason to run a card. I, I thoroughly believe that. Uh, this deck's fire, so let's, let's, get, let's look at some stuff you could put in here. Some people were bringing up some cards. Let me shift over to... Uh, the card review thing here. Okay. I don't know why it always does that. Okay, cool. So what are the people saying in the chat here? Some people brought up some cards. Flood. Wait, wait, wait. Containment Construct. Oh, I love Containment Construct. That is such a good recommendation for this deck. Two colorless for a 2-1. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that card this turn. So even if you do have like nothing but bombs in your hand with a Neheb swing, you can just still dump your whole hand and be able to play it until end of turn, which Neheb makes you mana, so you'll be able to play that shit with the mana you just got with Neheb. Containment Construct's fantastic in there. Yeah, that's actually a perfect card for that. Uh, Flood Engine. I don't think I've ever heard of this card. Oh, is that not a card? <laughs> is that just what you're saying Containment Construct will do? Because <laughs> that's very, very true. Um, so let me see here. I'm going to, I'm going to grab my Xantia deck really quick because I've got a bunch of stuff in there that would be, uh, I'm guessing very useful in this same exact deck. But which one is the Zantra? Is the question. Th 
think that's Zancha. Yep. Uh, Braid of Fire is something to consider because you're going for like big mana. But I guess Neheb kind of already supplies enough big mana. I don't know. Braid of Fire might be something to consider. Let me, uh, let me pull it up for you. Uh, in this deck, mm -hmm. Avison's Judgment. I was thinking Madness. Maybe. Oh yeah, some Madness cards. That's a super good point. Uh, what? That's like so Avison's, right? Avison's Judgment. One in a red for a sorcery. Madness X in a red. Avison's Judgment deals X two damage divided as you. Divided as you choose among any number of targets. If this spell's madness cost was paid, it deals X damage divided amongst you uh, as you choose. That's kind of cool. It's like a fireball if you discard it, or it just does two. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this like stuff like this or like Bane Fire would be really good. The uncounterable one, if it's like five or more, you could dump all your mana from uh, Neheb into a Bane. Sorry, I'm probably yelling into this thing right now. Uh, into a Bane Fire and attempt to win with that. This card. It's like one of my favorite ways to win. Yeah, there's the. That was like the only kind of exception. True. Oh, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, Braid of Fire, you lose the mana after your upkeep. Because you get on your upkeep, you get all your mana. And then once you move from upkeep to main phase, it empties. So it's good in Xantia because I can use all that mana on my upkeep to pump it all into Xantia. True. But anywhere else, like in decks where you can't use all that mana on upkeep. So yeah, Bra Braid of Fire, n neglect that recommendation. Um, Valica Exploration. Have you considered this? This card is like overperformed every time I've played it. I, I really, really enjoy this card. Uh, two and a red for an enchantment. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. At the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valica's Exploration, put them into your graveyard. Then it deals damage equal to that card's. Uh, wait, is it to the equal to the number of cards? Yeah, so you, it does damage equal to the number of cards that are under it to an opponent. So it's just card advantage for red when you play lands, which is actually good. And if you happen to not use that card, like if it's a mountain or something, it just pings someone for one. So it's a pinger, it's card draw. That's actually a really good one. I gotta go, guys, but my one very silly, not so serious, and also expensive suggestion, Sandals of Abdallah. Take care. <laughs> Alright, let's see what Sandals of Abdallah is. Who's that, Yeah. Sandals of Abdallah. Four colorless for a mono artifact. Pay two. Gives one creature island walk until end of turn. If that creature is destroyed, so are the sandals. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. Big Dog's like, you like mountain walk? Try some island walk. <laughs> I love, like, the like, design of that card. I love <laughs> it. And then you got that in the jester's hat. And then you got the whole get up. Uh, let's see. Curse of Shaken Faith is very good. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, whenever an enchant player casts a spell other than the first spell their turn, it does two damage to them. Um, very good. I played this against, I think, you, right? When you played, like, four or five spells. You were, like, playing a bunch of spells and, like, curse, curse. It's like, oh, shit. Thought it was a second spell. But, which I did for the longest time, too. It's literally any spell past your first, which is crazy. Let's see what else we got here. Have you considered skull crack? Like in, in exchange for lightning bolt? Cause like lightning bolt's good just cause it's one to deal three and like that'll kill a lot of creatures, but skull crack's just one more to also deal three. Oh, it's to target player. So uh, make your own decision about that. Skull crack's one in a red to deal three to a player, but then that player can't gain life and damage can't be prevented this turn. Uh, so this is really good. I like to use this in my Xantia deck for like a turn that I think I'm going to be like bring it like bring it home. You know what I mean? Like if I'm like they're at like 10 and I'm like if enough things happen this turn, I think I might be able to get like 10 damage off on them and I don't want to risk like anything happening. Um, and then you skull crack them and you're like, hey, deal three to you. Damage can't be prevented this turn. And even if they're like, hey, in response to that, play a fog, prevent all combat damage this turn uh then you don't have to like go through with doing all the any of the other stuff you wanted to do you know what i mean you like make them pull the trigger on a fog if they have it if they don't have it or if they have like other ways to do it at sorcery speed 
Uh, this completely shuts that down, which is great. Um, what else do we got here? Immolation Shaman, I got one of them. That's such a good one. Such a fun card. Um, Sulfuric Vor- Oh, uh, Sardian Avenger. This is like my shit. This is such a cool one. Uh, one in a red for a 1-1 one, one first strike trample. Whenever Sardian Avenger attacks, it gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts your opponents control. Whenever an artifact an opponent controls is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, Sardian Avenger deals one damage to that player. Uh, Sardian Avenger is insane. Uh, what's the new one that came out? Uh, what is it? There's a new one that came out in that's very close to Sardian Avenger. It does something super similar. Uh, let me just... Let me try to find it really quick. Color, red, oracle, deal, oracle, one, oracle, artifact, oracle, graveyard. Oh, come on. Yeah, boom. Hell yeah, I love Scryfall. Uh, pain distributor. This is great. Three and a red for a two three menace. Whenever a player casts their first spell each turn, they create a treasure token. Whenever an artifact an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, pain distributor deals one damage to that player. So you get treasures for playing your first spell. So does everybody else, but that's kind of cool. You can almost play like politically with it. Uh, but it's also a two three menace, and it also does one damage whenever anything or any artifacts are put into your opponent's graveyards, which are, just happens so much with treasures. Glinthorn Buccaneer. Oh, he has one in there. He does? Yep. Yeah, that's insane. I believe he does. Yep, Glinthorn Buccaneer. Yeah, that's a very good one. Uh, oh, that curse is useful, but I have pretty full art bolt. <laughs> that, keep the pretty full art bolt, then. <laughs> Sardian Avenger is something I've only recently discovered. My pod doesn't play a whole lot of treasure stuff, but I'm putting in the Kibo deck I'm making eventually. Fair enough. And yeah, hundred percent. Like the the meta has a ton to do with cards. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Oh my gosh, this would be really good in here. Um, where to go? Uh, the Defiler of Instinct. Seems great. Uh, two and two red for a four four first strike as an additional cost to cast red permanent spells you control You run all the things that like double damage all the stuff that pings when they play the game Like you have you have a lot more red permanents than even I run uh, and defiler of instinct still does work in my deck uh, Two and two red for a four four first strike as an additional cost to cast red permanent spells You may pay two life those spells cost one less one red less to play This effect only reduces the amount of red mana you pay whenever you cast a red permanent spell Defiler of instinct deals one damage to any target uh, so all those pingers you're playing are just pinging themselves and then all your pingers cost one red less if you're willing to deal two damage to yourself which most of the time you're probably willing to do that just to bring home a game uh defiler's great this thing actually works great i'm in a two color deck and i don't have that many red permanents and it still does work so mono red with the amount of red permanents you run seems fantastic uh this is the one that he brought up earlier in the video the court of ire This is a super good suggestion. Uh, three and two red for an enchantment. When Court of Ire enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, Court of Ire deals two damage to any target. If you're the monarch, it deals seven damage to that player or permanent instead. It's insane. <laughs> seven damage is so much. Uh, I think I have every defiler but that one. That's solid, though. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, the red ones actually seems perfect in that deck. Uh, so does Court of Ire. Court of Ire is, like, nutty. Seven damage. I mean, two damage alone on your upkeep is, like, actually pretty relevant in a deck like this. But especially in a deck uh, where you're running so much, like, burn and shit. Like, no one's really going to be touching you with the amount of creature damage you're able to do. Uh, Siege Gang Commander is another one. This one's kind of weird. But I, I run it for the same reason you kind of said in your in, in the little sum up of the deck where you're saying the old version didn't work because, like, you didn't have enough blockers to deal with stuff. Uh, that's kind of why I put Siege Gang Commander in mine. 3 and 2 red for a 2 2. When it comes into play, you get 3 1 1 red goblins, and then you can pay 1 and a red, sacrifice a goblin. Siege Gang deals 2 damage to any target. So you have essentially 4 blockers when you play Siege Gang, which is extremely relevant. And then you can block Sack with those blockers to deal 2 damage to any target, <clears throat> which is probably going to be the opponent. Uh, so you get 3 goblins that essentially just self destruct into shocks for the opponent. 
which are which is great like honestly like the amount of like blockers you need i love court of ire but i was also running it back when i had fewer creatures and kept getting my face beaten for monarch 100 percent. i think with more creatures uh it would work a lot better and i would cons i really would consider running cg and commander it's one of those cards that doesn't look like it makes like the most sense in a deck like this but then when you play with it you're like oh i have blockers i have pingers like it does a lot of work soul fire eruption might not be bad soul fire eruption that new one that i started running oh this one's hilarious you love fucking crazy ass cards <laughs> Soulfire Eruption, six and three red for a sorcery. Choose any number of target creatures, planeswalkers, and or players. For each of them, exile the top card of your library. Then Soulfire Eruption deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to the chosen permanent or player. You may play the exiled cards until the end of your next turn. So you can blast as many targets as you want, which is equal to the amount of cards you're flipping off the top <coughs> for whatever damage those are. And then you get to play the stuff, which is really good. I didn't even realize you get to play the stuff until he played that card uh, versus us the other day. Uh, which is super cool. If you're into like big flashy shit like this and your games actually, I almost fucking killed myself. If your games actually go like long enough to be able to play it, this card's actually really cool. Especially if you get just spam, like with the amount of mana you have with Neheb, nine's probably not too steep. That's what I was thinking. And then being able to play all that stuff with that mana as well seems really good. Like, so, so that does seem like it would work in that deck if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, Rage Thrower is great. Get one of these in your deck immediately. Five and a red for a 4-2. Whenever another creature dies, Rage Thrower deals two damage to target player. Yeah. Not non-token or anything like that. Just boom. Ooh, I do like Soul Fire. Oh, yeah. It's a cool card. And, like, if you're if you're in a playgroup that's able to play stuff like that, it is very, very fun to play against and play with. Uh, Rage Thrower seems great. Just any, any creature dies. Doesn't even have to be yours. You just shoot someone for two. And doesn't even have to be non-token. Um. Oh, isolation cell. I didn't see that in there. This is probably my favorite card in my in, in my Zancha deck. Uh, four colorless for an artifact. Whenever an opponent casts a creature spell, that player loses two unless they pay two mana. It's like a weird ghostly prison effect. Uh, but like it's when they cast creatures, it just makes them tap out and not be able to play shit. And then most of the time, they're like, eh, whatever, I'll take two. And they've taken, like, six, eight, ten damage with this thing and not even realized it. Uh, and the art's just fucking sick. This is probably my favorite card in this answer deck, I'd say. Um, uh, Lavaborn Muse is definitely something to think about as well. Uh, three and a red for a three three at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep if that player has two or fewer cards in their hand It does three damage to him or her uh, Two or fewer is kind of steep But still like three damage is pretty cool bolting someone in the face if they have less than two So if anybody plays too aggressive uh, They get punished for it, which is cool because we're playing aggressive So it's almost like we're the only one that's able to play aggressive when this cards out um, Oh, what the hell Oh uh, there's like, there's like the rack, there's like Death's Grimoire, that's the one where you discard cards, I think. No, 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 you're, you're 100, Death's Grimoire, you're 100% right, it's like got the face on it. Yeah, that's like a weird You're 100% right. Yep, it's Geth's Grimoire. Yep. Four colors for an artifact, whenever an opponent discards a card from their hand, you may draw a card. That's a cool card. Not, not what I remembered it doing. Yeah. Cool card though. I uh, I just saw one that would be great in here. What was it? After isolation cell. Um, oh, iron crag pyromancer. Like this is 100% needs to go in there. This is perfect for this deck. Two and a red for a zero four. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, it does three damage to any target. And with Neheb, you're discarding your whole hand and then drawing that many, right? No, if you discard any number of cards, if you do draw that many cards then add that much red yeah iron crad a hundred percent oh oh yeah 100 percent, dude another great suggestion from the peanut gallery yeah we've got psychosis crawler whenever you draw a card each opponent loses one <laughs> just yeah oh my god 
Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that's that's the suggestions we got on my on my end. I don't know if you got any more back there that you can come up with. Oh yeah, I do like I really like the stuffy and creepy dolls and stuff like that. Yeah, stuffy doll just is just a pinger. It like at its worst, it just sits there and does one every turn, which uh, some other some other of your cards are doing the same thing. Uh, but it also has the off chance of you being able to play blasphemous act and just thirteen everybody, or thirteen somebody, which is really good. I think creepy doll is the same, but I'm not sure. Oh, whenever creepy doll deals damage to a creature, flip a coin. If you win the flip, destroy that creature. So yeah, strippy, creepy doll not so much. Uh, but Stuffy Doll and whatever the other one he was running is, yeah. uh, both seem fantastic in this deck. Hundred percent. Uh, I had Burning Sands early on. It's like Rage Thrower, Burning Sands. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, that creature's controller sacrifices a land. Oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah, it's like Rage Thrower if you're Satan. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Sack and lands for it. Good God. Uh, I do like Soulfire. Iron Crag seems great. Yeah, Iron Crag seems like a perfect card for this deck. Like, actually. Let me look at my binder really quick. Because I bought the... Uh, I'm bushing out the binders. I bought the Gabby Nest Warden like cycling deck a while back, and that probably has a ton of really good stuff for this. So I'm just seeing if anything jumps out. <laughs> mono red. I got tons of mono red shit. But anything that you need is the question. I think you ran Glittering Stockpile, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. Glittering Stockpile is cool. I swore I saw one in here. I'm not sure. It's a good card, though. Um, let's see. Anything else that we got in here that don't work in the deck? Oh, yeah. Shoop -a -doop -a -doo. Hmm. Uh, City on Fire. Have you, have you thought about that in here? Sudi. On viewer. <laughs> On viewer. Five and three red with convoke, and then it just makes all your stuff deal uh, triple damage. <laughs> that seems pretty good. Yeah, Surly Badgesaur. I forgot about that recommendation. This 100% needs to go in your deck. Three and a red for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you discard a creature card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Surly Badgesaur. Whenever you discard a land card, create a treasure token. Whenever you discard a non-creature, non-land card, it fights something. Uh, yeah, with Neheb, you're going to be discarding a ton of lands. And then floating red for the amount of lands you discarded. And then creating treasures for the amount of lands you discarded. Which is just going into like the strategy you're trying to do. Perfect. Relic Robber is one that I tried in my Xantia. <laughs> Weird. I know it's so it's so hard to get it to work. But I'm thinking with like if he runs the non-basic land walk boots and like Whisper Silk Cloak and like the mountain walk stuff, it's like maybe like you know what I mean. I don't have enough ways to make my stuff unblockable to make it worth it. But like maybe in this, if if it's something you're into. Uh, two and a red for a 2-2 two -two haste. Whenever Relic Robber deals combat damage to a player, that cre that player creates a 0-1 colorless goblin construct creature token with this creature can't block, and at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature deals 1 damage to you. 
Uh, yeah, it's really good because people can still swing with it, but more than likely their opponent's going to be like, nah, I'll take it because they want you to take one damage on your upkeep. And if you can stack a bunch of these on somebody, they just start taking a ton of damage on their upkeep. Again, it's extremely hard to get off, uh, but it's a funny-ass card that I really want to work, but it doesn't most of the time. Yeah, that's what I got. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look back in the chat real quick. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. Uh, yeah, the Basilisk Collar would be pretty good if you could give uh, uh, Neheb Death Touch. Like uh, Big Dog was talking about, because if he has Death Touch, you're able to assign one damage with Neheb. Uh, and that's all it takes for, for it to kill the creature, and then the rest tramples over with the uh, trample she has. So that actually seems very, very good. Conspiracy Theorist was another one that Big Dog recommended. One in a red for a 2-2. Whenever a conspiracy theorist attacks, you may pay one and discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Whenever you discard one or more non-land cards, you may exile one of them from your graveyard. If you do, you may cast it this turn. It's a great card. It's just like the other one we were talking about, uh, the containment specialist or containment, whatever it is. Containment bot. What the fuck was it called? I think it was containment specialist or something like that. Uh, it just lets you play all the stuff you discard, which seems great in this deck. Cavalier of Flames? I haven't heard that in so long. Is that the 2 and 3 red? Yeah, that lets you, when it enters, you discard any number of cards and draw that many, and then when it dies, it deals X damage to each opponent and each flame spell that they control. So yeah, that seems great in there. And then you can do 1 and a red creatures, you can draw their plus 1 plus 1 haste. Yeah, that's just, a little, that's just a little cherry on top there. Uh, Cavalier of Flame, 2 and 3 red, 6, 5, 1 and a red, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and gain haste. When it enters the battlefield, discard any number of cards, then draw that many. When it dies, it deals X damage to each opponent in each planeswalker, where X is the number of land cards in your graveyard. Oh, good god. That's real good. You're going to be discarding tons of lands with Neheb. Super good suggestion. Yeah, Cavalier seems great. Um... Oh, we lasted so long without a commercial. <laughs> Give them hell, Indy. Cool. That looks like all the suggestions. That's a ton of good cards, though. It's a good, like, 15 cards to consider there. Quasi Quafta. Um, but yeah. Awesome deck, though. I really actually enjoyed all the decks so far, if I'm being honest. Like, all of them we've done so far have been sweet. They've been, like, actual decks that I've considered building. And Mono Red's kind of a hard one to make me want to build, but this one's actually very, very cool. Cavalier of Flames is badass. <laughs> it really is. I've never read that card. I've read the black one and the green one. I don't think I've read the white, the blue one, or the red one. Yeah, the red one's crazy. That's very, very good. Yo, the room looking sick. Thanks, Ty. Appreciate you. Uh, yeah, we're going to hop off, though, guys. I really appreciate the deck, uh, or the fucking views, but I also like the fucking deck submission. This thing's awesome. Uh, if you want to look at the deck, there's a link to it down in the description if you want to check it out or build it for yourself or maybe suggest any suggest any cards to Quasi Quafta. Uh, he's pretty much always on the streams. He's always commenting on the channel. He's a he's a awesome part of the community, so you can pretty much always reach out to him on here and get a hold of him. If you've got any questions or suggestions or anything like that, uh, this deck's fire. Especially those two battles. I had no idea that's what the backsides of those did. Which both are just extraordinary, extraordinarily relevant for like Xantia and the decks like this. What does the other Neheb do? Three and two red for a four, six, afflict. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add one red to your mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. Oh. I mean, putting him in there. 
Yeah, you need to run the other. Oh, it's a twenty dollar card. I understand not running this one if you're on a budget. Uh, but put this on your list if you're on a budget for, for cards to get because that's yeah. crazy in your deck. That is so good in there. Yeah, that's nutty. Super cool deck though. I dig it a lot. 200 bucks for the list that we're looking at, which is super inexpensive for how like strong this looks like it plays. This is awesome. Uh, let me know if this is the deck you were playing tonight, uh, Crafta. You said you were you said you were meeting up with some of your pals and watching it. Or if this is the deck you did play, I want to know how it went. <laughs> this deck is fire. I see what you did there. Cavalier is badass sick. I'm going to go watch the first half of this. Lamau, happy to be here. This deck is fire. I see what you did there. Yeah, I like to say I'm using the worst Neheb for this build. <laughs> Dude, I completely feel you. And I don't even think that's a thing, if I'm being completely honest. Like, Because like, the other Neheb can't do like extra combats and like get more mana. And like the other Neheb doesn't care about combat, and the other Neheb like you know what I mean. Like there's it's two completely different uh, things. The other one's definitely easier to get like going, but this one is uh, definitely more fun to build around for sure. With like the vault, with the mountain walk and the rogues passages and shit like that for sure. Super cool card, super cool deck by the way as well. Four for a five, five four. That's just good stats. With trample. Oh yeah. Well, and it's when she does combat damage, too, so maybe some double strike enablers would be something to consider. I'm not sure. I like that. That's probably why you have this one over here the uh, Blood Mist, where you can give one creature double strike each turn, so you can just keep picking the Heb. But I'm just thinking if there's like a better way or a better card that you could use to do that, which I don't really think there is, but. Oh, that's true, because the death touch thing actually does work with the double strike thing really well. What's up? You're doing a live stream? Mm -hmm. hmm? Everybody. All 3,000 of them. <laughs> oh, did you? I'm having one right now. Yeah, this, this shit looks cool, dude. I actually really, really like this deck a lot. The, the Taralf... It's on my screen. The Taralf is something I think you should put in. Like, I know you played with it before, but you said you ran less creatures. I think that's something you should should consider. Trailblazer's Boots definitely have a spot in here. That's for sure. Uh, the other, the creatures that get puff, like buffs from, like, people taking damage I don't like very much. Uh, Aether Sting I love, though. I don't know why this one isn't in your deck. This one's actually very, very good. A every creature spell they cast does one damage to them. That's very, very good. That's Moy Buen. And Battle Strain, honestly. Whenever anybody blocks, they deal one damage to that creature's uh, controller. That's pretty good. Like, I like the uh, mana barbs. Uh, I forget what the other card was, but where they have to like, pay two. Or whatever. The Isolation Cell? No, the other one he had. It was like oh, oh, uh, uh, Mudslide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that together. For sure. Mudslide and... Uh, what was the other one you brought up? Mana barbs. Mana barbs. Yeah, mudslide and mana barbs is really cool together. You're just making them pay mana, and if they yeah they just take the damage no matter what. Yeah, that's fire. Yeah, I'm really a big fan of this. Uh, yeah. Thanks for submitting the deck, my guy. I appreciate it. I always like looking at new strategies. Uh, and also <laughs> there's like seven or eight cards in here that I do not have in Zancha that I didn't even know existed. Uh, that I'm 100% going to be putting in my Zancha deck as well. So appreciate that. Uh, check out the daily card highlight if you have not. Uh, much love. If you're uh, one of the patrons, go check out the giveaway live stream. It's on the live tab on my channel. I announced the winners of this month's giveaway. So you might be one of them. And uh, yeah, submit your deck to lightshallow at gmail.com. That should be in the description as well. If you want to be put into the queue to be on the Friday night deck reviews and uh yeah if you could make it on like Architect or uh Moxfield that'd be great because those those two like translate onto stream better than tapped out and stuff like that uh but if they're on tapped out and stuff that's fine much love guys uh go play some magic and do all that shit Crazy Crafter bust out this deck and uh get it going <laughs>